Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to you all to our experts workshop Plant Act, Plants for Climate Action, Growing a Resilient Society. Here at the German House, home of the permanent mission of the Federal Republic of Germany to the United Nations, the German Consulate General New York, the German Research Foundation, the FK North America, the German Center for Research and Innovation, the WIH New York, and the University of Cologne, New York office. These are also, together with C+, the cluster of excellence on plant sciences at the University of Cologne, all the co-organizers of this workshop and the panel discussion later today. Thank you to all our partners and to the John Templeton Foundation for their generous support. My name is Eva Bosbach and I serve as the Executive Director of the University of Cologne's New York office. Have you um, ever been to Germany, anybody? Maybe particularly to Cologne? <laughs> Yay, great. As you might know, Cologne is known for its Gothic cathedral, the Kölner Dom that you can see there, which happens to be actually the most visited German landmark with um, around 20,000 visitors uh, every day. And in addition to that, uh, Cologne also houses an important university, the University of Cologne. It is currently one of the largest universities in Germany with over 50,000 students and with four international liaison offices, one in India, one in China, our newest one in Cairo and Egypt, and ours here in New York. In the North America office, our mission is to present top-notch research from the University of Cologne to the North American audience and to connect our scientists to their peers on this side of the Atlantic to discuss issues that are important to all of us. Some of our top research areas at the University of Cologne are aging research, markets and public policy, matter and light for quantum computing, the global south, linguistics and astrophysics. Today, we will discuss plant sciences on which, as I mentioned, we have a prominent research cluster of excellence, in fact, the only one in, on plant sciences in Germany. CEPLAS is at home at the University of Cologne, together with the Heinrich Heine University in Dusseldorf, the Max Planck Institute for Plant Breeding Research, and the Forschungszentrum Mühlich. And I'm very happy to welcome you, Stan Kopřiva, today, Principal Investigator of CEPLAS from the University of Cologne and the Cluster Co-Speaker here at the German House. Scientific findings, including research results from our CEPLAS and University, are the basis for fact-based analysis of climate change and for research-based development of new further measures to mitigate it. Our goal is to make the research findings even more clearly accessible both in teaching and in dialogue with society by combining research, teaching, and knowledge transfer, especially in transatlantic cooperation and with regards to global audiences. The University of Cologne has defined sustainability competencies as one of our quality goals in teaching and studying. CEPLAS and their principal investigator Stan and others are founding members and supporters of the Plant Act initiative, which you will hear about in a minute from Stan and Heribert Hirt, the main speaker of the initiative. Welcome to you as well. Our aim today is to bring together plant scientists from both sides of the Atlantic and to introduce this new European bottom-up initiative to the US. And I look forward to hearing about all your ideas and expertise. And all of us organizers are excited about the opportunity um, to develop, hopefully, some realistic projects towards sustainable plant and agriculture-based solutions that can possibly counteract the ongoing climate crisis. Last but not least, I would like to thank all the helpers um, for the organization of our events, mainly our fantastic intern, Sharon Park, and Devi has outstanding Julia Helms. We could not do this, we could not do this without you, and thank you so much. On behalf of the permanent mission of the Federal Republic of Germany to the United Nations, the German Consulate General, the German Research Foundation, the AFK, the German Center for Research and Innovation, and with thank you to the John Templeton Foundation, especially Emanuela Sani, who is with us today. Where are you, Emanuela? There she is. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of you experts who came today, experts from all over America to work with us and for our planet. Have a great workshop. Over to Stan and Herbert.
Thanks, Eva, for the introduction, and I'm, I'm really happy that, that I can be here uh, on behalf of Plant Act. Um, I, I think I will give you a little uh, introduction into the history. It's not very long, because it started actually last year in, in June at an AMBO conference. Um, and it was, I think, inspired really also by the talk by Joanne uh, on the activities that happened at the SOC. And we had a, in a big discussion about what happens in the world and that things have to be done, and, but there's actually no coordinated efforts. And so there was the idea then to try and coordinate efforts more uh, globally. Um, and um, so people actually came up to me and asked me if I don't want to do that. <laughs> and um, since I've been uh, a player in European politics and uh, science politics uh, for some, some time. Uh, so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try and see whether we can make this idea fly. And so um, we organized a, a kickoff meeting in November in Versailles. Um, and 25 people came mostly from Europe, but also from the US and from Israel. Um, uh, and everybody was basically paying his own fees. So it was like, a non, mostly non-funded uh, uh, workshop, so which you know, with some little funding for. Uh, but that that was, I think, very good because it was a good sign that people really felt that there's an urgent need to do something. And and we uh, we working uh, three days hard together uh, on on a white paper, uh, which now gets published and which is like actually a collective work then that was sent out to all interested people, which are the overall 62 people that were part of this, of this effort. So I got a lot of emails, as you can imagine, from different people uh, to write up this paper with diverse ideas and things like that. But um, I'm happy that this is out now <laughs> and we can go to the next stage. Um, so I will just give you a little presentation now. on the ideas behind that. Because, of course, at this meeting in, in, in Versailles, we, we were actually clarifying really also uh, the, 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 the stakes. What, what should we do and what can we do? And uh, I mean, that's actually why we invited you to come and, and, and try and work together with us. And I should say, the Plant Act is really a bottom-up activity. So it, it's open to every plant scientist and we can also say, you know, why, why only plant scientists? We can discuss these things later on because also we had lots of discussions about that, how big, how small we should actually do that. It's, it's very obvious what, what is happening on this planet. I think uh, it's, uh, uh, we have really not only climate change, we have a climate crisis. And uh, in this, in this uh, context, I think what is also uh, less visible actually in the discussion, in the, in the public discussion, is the role of agriculture. And uh, agriculture really plays a major role as, an, uh, as a contributor to, to, to climate change. And um, I think that, uh, again, is, is a very important message, actually, that we have to convey to, well, to the public and also to politicians that, um, that, that we have to do something at this level. So it's about 25% uh, of all climate uh, active gases, greenhouse gases, are actually coming from uh, agricultural activities, not only plant, but also animal uh, uh, agriculture, of course. And um, yeah, so just a few facts. CO2 is released from deforestation, deforestation and land conversion. And these two factors are really uh, um, contributing heavily to, to CO2 release. Um, deforest, uh, I, will, I will show you in a, in a talk then more in more detail about, about these facts. Um, the, we have a lot of methane that comes from rice paddy fields, and we have also a lot of nitrous oxides that come from over-fertilization. Um, so the, in the increasing world population requires, of course, more food. And um, how, how can we achieve that? If we are continuing the way we do agriculture, this will be uh, basically not achievable without heavy, heavy problems. So um, this is actually where we think that the Plant Act initiative can have a role, should have a role, um, as a think tank, so that actually we are really getting together, not only plant scientists, but also 
plant scientists with other scientists and, um, and, and lay out a, a roadmap. And the white paper that we, that we publish now is basically such a roadmap, um, first roadmap, I would say. It uh, needs, it's just like a, a, a rough roadmap that leads a lot of work, but it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a guideline where to go, what would be important. And so what are the key, key questions actually? So the key question is, can we convert agriculture from a, a positive to a negative uh, greenhouse gas contributor? So, uh, and, and which short-term and long-term solutions need to be developed? Because that, I think, is also something that in the, in the, uh, we, ha we really have to look for short-term solutions, 2030, that kick in 2030, not in 2050. We are actually way ahead of the predictions of the climate change. So the predictions for 2050 20, are already happening now. So we are actually seeing also that our modeling is, 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 is uh, not very precise but unfortunately not in the good way, but in the, in the bad direction. And um, so we also were thinking that you know, there need to be some changes in the scientific culture. That the, we have, I think, a very robust scientific reviewing system that is very good for, for making basic science, but I don't think we have the best tools for actually developing solutions, rapid solutions, that can help uh, against this crisis. So we have to uh, we were thinking also along these lines, and of course we want to continue to do that with your expert help and, and ideas. And, and we also think that this change in scientific culture in, implies actually funding structures, so that the funding uh, is uh, not only required at a, uh, a local level, but really at a global level, because a lot of the problems that we have are not just uh, cannot be solved here and in the US alone or in Europe alone. We really have to go and look into different places and, and, and to work together. So that's a, a big thing also to go global and connect up with people all over the, the world. And the, then we had a kind of list of topics what, what, what are where we need solutions. And this is like a, a list that is not <laughs> finished at all, but you know, it really like has a, a lot of uh, topics on, on it. Um, and then we said, we have to start somewhere. So we had to, we were working actually on priority list on what are the most urgent topics and how we can actually attack this. And I will tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, so I think this is a, uh, something that was the outcome from this, from this workshop that we did in Versailles. We were really looking um, into the different greenhouse gases, methane, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide, the three. I will explain that a little bit in more detail. And uh, also, then we were making a, time, a, a table here to basically um, point out how can we avoid these greenhouse gases? How can we adapt, actually, plants to the current and future situation? Um, and how can we also develop strategies of mitigation? And so in this, is, uh, this, in this kind of table, there's also a timeline in there. So we brought in three different sections. Um, the one in, in dark red is actually uh, basically immediate, immediate actions. The one in, in, uh, in, in light blue is in, um, for, for, me, for immediate uh, midterm and then in green long-term actions, which I think is also an important factor that we have to think about this. I, I will explain that. I just want to give you a kind of short overview of, of uh, what we were thinking. So um, how can plant scientists really contribute to, to, to tackle climate change? I think the key things uh, in a nutshell is to bring together plant scientists uh, around the world, uh, around one table, um, that means we not only plant scientists, but we felt we, that is our expertise. So this is something where we can speak about. Uh, but we have to clearly, we, we know that we, are, we don't know everything, so we need actually other experts. So we actually have to bring in other experts from other, dis different, from other disciplines. And for making solutions uh, a check proof for reality, we actually need um, different people to work on this. And this means uh, hydrologists, you need sociologists, you know, from really different fields. Um, 
and then of course we were thinking we also have to bring in together funding agencies and so i think we're also working on this here uh, right now um, so that means that the idea then was can we can we work out solutions in a in a different way also so that we for example make uh, uh, conferences in a different style that not just having big shots telling about their great research but that we have for example the funding agencies directly uh, being present together with the researchers that come for example with a proposal of a solution and then this solution could be for example chosen uh, directly to go for a, a full application so that we could shorten up the procedure of coming writing a project submitting a project reviewing a project getting funding of a project which normally takes uh, something like two years or something like that until people can really start working on something we have to kind of shorten up this process because it's, it's an urgent thing uh, urgent need and of course as I said uh, we have to prioritize also the topics we have to like really think about short-term solutions because actually 2030 is already a real uh, a, a deadline for us to provide solutions that are kicking in we cannot wait until 2050 with our programs and then I think the next thing is that we just have to get down to work yeah so <laughs> um, that was my overview um, I will then hand over to actually my colleague and also a founding member of this uh, activity Stan uh, um, and he will tell you something about uh, our basically a really fantastic partner institute um, as you heard from Eva the C++ um, initiative uh, or, or uh, in, in, in Cologne and Düsseldorf so please thank you yeah uh, welcome everyone also from from my side um, Herbert called me last summer I think shortly after the after the uh, initial meeting caught me in, in, in holidays enjoying uh, some drinks with my family uh, explained to me what what this is about and asked me whether uh, CEPLAS uh, would like to be involved and, uh, and maybe help to organize a, a conference which uh, gave me something like five milliseconds to, to think about before I said yes of course um, and um, yeah and uh, now we are here and uh, I just like to explain a little bit why uh, here in, in German House and what, has, uh, what C++ is and, and what we do and uh, why we think that uh, this is an appropriate place for a meeting like this. So as um, Eva said, we are a, a, a joint venture of uh, University of Cologne, University of Düsseldorf, of the Max Planck Institute for Plant Breeding Research in Cologne and the uh, uh, Ocean Centrum Jülich. Um, don't be surprised that there are different cities. Uh, this is actually all in a small triangle in the west of, uh, uh, of Germany. Um, depending on traffic, something between 30 and uh, 90 minutes drive from one place to another. Uh, and a very good uh, cooperation actually between us. So what this um, all cluster of excellence actually means. Um, so this is an initiative of the German Research Foundation um, that had the aim to uh, improve um, science quality of the of the university and uh, contribute also to science oriented teaching at the universities and um, there were several rounds of this funding already we have been successful uh, between 2012 and 2018 uh, with uh, title of complex rates of synthetic modules it's about 34 million euro uh, over this uh, over this time and then uh, the renewal in 2019 uh, with the so what the money was actually used for, um, we have established uh, over these years um, actually 14 new professorships. So not replacement of, of old people, uh, retiring people, but um, 14 new professorships in plant sciences in, in these two universities. So that's a really a big contribution to um, the importance of, of plant science. And that's what we see ourselves also as a um, you know, kind of people who bring uh, the importance of, of plant science uh, forward in, in Germany because we are also the only uh, only cluster on uh, green cluster. So um, the motivation, um, you know, 
2010. So they're, they're actually the, the real big, uh, big issue, as we saw, it was, uh, was food security, of course, uh, growing population. Um, but of course, global change as a, uh, another challenge uh, to, uh, to this uh, growing population. Uh, resource and soil depletion, soil erosion. So uh, clearly, we saw that uh, we need to contribute solutions in order to increase yield of crop plants and reduce environmental impact. So uh, the mission of CIPLAS, uh, and actually over the uh, whole period of time, is uh, in the first place to develop solutions for sustainable food security through excellent fundamental plant research. So the emphasis here is really on, on uh, fundamental research. But we also recognize that uh, in order to sustain the excellence in science, we need to offer innovative training programs and train the new generation of scientists. And we put really great emphasis on that, and I'll show you that in a, in a moment. And um, in Europe, you know, the, the plant science, and especially when we talk about genetic manipulation, uh, is a very controversial uh, topic. And therefore, it is uh, really important that, that we engage in a public debate and uh, try to explain the greater societal context of uh, plant science and the importance of, of plants to the, uh, to the society. Um, so the, the, the vision of C plus is to enable biology-informed predictive plant breeding. So we have to uh, understand the genetic design principles of the major traits of crop plant and then predict their performance in given environment. And uh, by that, we would be able to uh, design traits uh, for specific environments uh, directly um, through uh, genetic manipulation. And there, the two major, uh, major topics and major objectives are to understand and predict how the plant performance and uh, reproductive success depends on integration of developmental decisions with metabolism, and that also on different uh, scales, so uh, really from the uh, uh, molecular mechanisms uh, on single protein and, and gene level to a whole plant uh, scale. And then understand and predict how microbiota contribute to plant performance, adaptation to specific soil conditions. And here you hear the word soil that is also actually very important in uh, what we do and plant science actually uh, is to contribute. So C plus research is uh, divided in four research areas. One uh, on the plant performance by mapping the interface between development and metabolism. Then we have a, a below ground uh, research area on plant microbiota and nutritional networks and adaptive adaptations. And then uh, these are uh, supported very strongly by a research area on synthetic and reconstruction biology, uh, providing uh, very innovative uh, tools and approaches that uh, help us to tackle the, uh, the scientific questions here, as well as uh, an area on theoretical plant biology and, uh, and data science. Um, as I said, we, um, a part of, of the uh, research, uh, we are um, really committed to uh, training of, uh, of young researchers, and we have um, um, developed uh, training programs on all different levels, uh, starting from um, research internships for undergraduate students, so we approach uh, students in their third semester of studies, offer them placements in the, in the lab, and uh, give them the first uh, uh, experience in research projects. And by that, we, of course, hope to uh, get these students uh, in, uh, interested in, in plants, right? Uh, we have uh, established a bachelor program in quantitative biology, a program between two universities, a program in, in English in Germany, and a program where we teach biology and mathematics at the same time from the, from the scratch. So this is a, a very interesting program, and we are getting really very interesting students there as well. We have our own graduate school, and uh, we have a representative of the grad school here, Svenja here, uh, so she might uh, tell you more about how uh, C++ students uh, are feeling about what we do. And um, we also have a, a dedicated postdoc program uh, for postdocs at different level, for, for uh, postdocs at the beginning of their, uh, of their career when they are getting guidance, uh, uh, their further career paths go in academia or maybe industry, or then for um, more advanced postdocs and to guide them towards um, uh, independence and uh, junior uh, research groups. Um, what we, of course, know uh, from uh, uh, the 
impact of, of, of climate change on productivity of plants is the effect of, of temperature, that with increasing temperature there will be a reduction of yield. But there is also the uh, other component, other uh, danger of uh, the increased CO2 that is uh, often um, neglected. Uh, that, that increase of, uh, of CO2 is actually decreasing the quality of the, uh, of the crops by decreasing Concentrations of uh, essential minerals and, uh, and and proteins in the um, in the in the seeds and in the, in the plants. So this uh, carbon dilution penalty is, of course, another problem that uh, that we need to, to tackle. And um, to uh, mitigate the effect of CO2, we are currently establishing a new initiative uh, again between Cologne, Düsseldorf, and um, this time uh, also uh, the University of Aachen and again Forschung Center Mühle. Um, that uh, uh, will deal with uh, CO2 management. And uh, in this new con uh, consortium, we bring people not only from plant sciences and soil science, um, but also uh, technical people, biotechnologists, people in material sciences, um, to develop new and innovative uh, ways to uh, capture CO2. This is what, uh, what we need to do, is of course to not only to reduce emissions, but also to reduce the CO2 that's already accumulated in the, in the atmosphere, uh, to convert it uh, through sequestration and storage, or to capture it into um, other molecules that can be then used as uh, foodstocks or uh, in construction or for um, different chemicals. So um, the idea here is to use the photosynthetic uh, CO2 um, fixation caused by plant and, and algae, and then the um, assimilated carbon can be used by a range of uh, heterotrophic systems to produce uh, different, uh, different uh, chemicals, uh, either long-tip or short-tip uh, carbon sinks, uh, and then using those fungi or algae or um, bacteria or um, plant roots as a, a means to sequester carbon uh, into uh, the long-term storage. Of course, uh, inspired as well by, uh, by the work of, uh, of Johan and, and, and Wolfgang. So we will be working on, on the uh, carbon storage in, in soil, on recovery of, of CO2 from waste streams, um, on microbial factories for long life products, and in replacement of agriculture derived products, uh, um, improving the, um, the, the, the carbon, um, carbon capacity uh, of the and the aim of our initiative is to get from neutral emissions to negative emissions and help to um, really improve the, the life in the planet in the, in the long term, or put the foundation to them. So with that, with these activities that are going on in our region, Cologne and Düsseldorf, it's quite clear that uh, we have to be part of, uh, of Planta. And uh, we are very happy uh, that this initiative is there. And that, uh, um, we can uh, contribute our expertise in a bigger, bigger context. And uh, uh, so now I guess I can give uh, Harry Bird the word again and uh, to talk a bit more in detail about uh, the aims of, of Panther. Uh, yeah, thanks, Stan.